Good evening, welcome to the studio. We are live and everything's set up. It took a little bit of time to get things up tonight for eh, always like something else. It's always um oh just whilst you're here. Let's let's um tell you about all these programs that need updating and uh, then you're gonna log into Twitch and because uh, you're gonna log into Twitch it's two factor authentication and where's my phone gone? I don't carry my phone with me. And so uh, you know lots of lots of time. However, we're here. Welcome if you're watching. If you're not watching, not much point in me talking to you. Um so you get here and then there'll be some point. Anyway, what I'm gonna do first of all is uh, work off camera so you can't see what I'm doing. <laughs> now what I'm going to do is just close up a number of rings because we've got uh, a fair bit of weaving to do and so
Now the last stream I put, not only did I half finish a row, making it easy to know which row I'm starting on at which side, I put that piece of wiring which tells me exactly where this ring that I'm about to start weaving when I do goes. So I should be able to start exactly where I left off and continue from there. Unlike the last stream, where I spent an hour trying to work out where I was because for some reason on uh, the stream before that, I decided not to um, weave a row properly. I decided for some, for some reason to uh, completely misweave a row by missing out every alternate ring. Hmm. I have no idea what possessed me to do that at all or why. I can't think of any particular reason why that would be a good idea. Um, but I seem to have done it. I must have been either very tired or those gremlins that came around after I streamed that and removed a set of rings. And I kind of feel more inclined to believe the second rather than the first, but I know it's got to be the first. Because <laughs> uh, there isn't really gremlins. At least, I don't think so. Unless, of course, you know a different. So, lots of little tiny rings. Uh, one of the hardest parts about well, one of the hardest parts, not that any of it is particularly easy working with these rings, but one of the hardest parts is picking the things up. And they're being so tiny, it's really hard to pick them up with a pair of pliers. And if you pick them up with your fingers, it's even, it's even harder. Because uh, these pliers are a little bit finer nose than my fingers are. But even with these fine nose pliers, these things are really hard to pick up. I have actually started to develop a particular technique, which I don't know if you saw me doing it over there, but it's kind of put this down, roll it, and then pick up the ring. Quite clever, really. Once it's in the pliers, it's a, it's a bit easier to manipulate. Even if I have to sort of do move it around quite a bit like that, just make it a bit easy. So I could just carry on and keep uh, closing all of these. I can do a few, weave them, and then close some more. And I'm not quite sure which I'll do, but I'm going to do a uh, do a fair few anyway, to the point where. If nothing else, I'm getting bored and decide, you know what, I want to do, do some weaving. Because in a bracelet, it is surprising how many rings go in. And you take something like this one, here that you can see. Seven and a half inch bracelet. There's over 500 rings in that bracelet. So it's, uh, there's a lot to open and close, um, as you can imagine. Uh, whereas, you know, this one, which is bigger, but with bigger rings, has significantly less in. I actually don't know how many is in that. Um, I've got a feeling like about 1 to 150, something like that. Although I don't know exactly. I, I, well, I I could count them, and I do know exactly from the point of view I've got it written down somewhere. But uh, it's significantly uh, less. Which makes uh, closing an opening and closing rings for something like that a breeze compared with, uh, with this tiny stuff.
But of course, the, the fun bit for you guys to watch is not me opening and closing rings, unfortunately. It's, well, that might be fun for you, I don't know. You tell me, is watching me opening and closing rings fun? <laughs> it might be, I guess, especially when we start talking about all sorts of weird things while I do it. Um, which, of course, really does pass the time for me if I start talking about all sorts of weird things. I'm doing this off stream, or doing something like this off stream. I just, um, it's sort of a different mood kicks in. Okay, well for you, go ahead and look. Uh, where I just, um, this is, I call it a philosophical mood. I just, um, my brain, what well, doesn't exactly turn off, but it just relaxes and uh, I stop, sort of stop thinking about things. And I just get on it and, and time passes almost without notice when I'm doing that. And I can get through sort of several hundred rings without any particular thought. Um, but uh, when, I'm, when, I'm, when I'm streaming, I kind of have to keep thinking. <laughs> so I can't enter that sort of mood. At least not very easily. I have to uh, uh, continuously think about what I'm what I'm doing, where I'm doing it on camera, and uh, what I'm saying. So it's Friday today. He says, thinking about it, which actually uh, means that this weekend, fairly sure it's this weekend in the UK. Uh, we get one o'clock twice in one twice in one night because our clocks alter this uh, Saturday, well Sunday morning, I guess it is. Uh, British summertime changes to GMT, so the local clocks here, in theory, go one fifty one fifty nine. Uh, one, you know, 159, 59 seconds, then they immediately switch to 1 o'clock again. So we get the whole hour in. Clocks go back. They go back. Yeah, they go back. So 7 in the morning becomes 6 in the morning. Which means we get an extra hour in bed. Hey, I hadn't thought about that. Um, Is quite quite an interesting uh, interesting thing to happen is is that clockwise causes all sorts of interesting problems for some computer programs and uh, quite often the way a lot of computer programs do it is they cheat that they use GMT sort of problems you get with computers is that this uh, that yeah. The, the minutes between 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. happen twice. So if you have an alarm that goes off at 1.30 a.m., um, which one do you, which 1.30 a.m. do you set it for? Is it going off or does it go off twice? Which is a, um, an interesting dilemma for a lot of computer programs that have scheduled activities at 1.30 a.m. in the morning, for example. Right, just for the sake of it, I'm going to do another 10. And then I'll weave some. I'm not altogether sure these days why um, why we bother changing the clocks. That's something that's gone a one. Originally they used to say it was because uh, it reduced the number of accidents in the morning because it was lighter in the morning when people were travelling to work. But then um, it's darker in an evening when people are travelling home from work. 
So wouldn't that mean there'd be more accidents in an evening now instead? So you move the accidents from the morning to the evening after people have done a complete night day's work when they're more tired rather than when they've just woken up when they've supposedly had a restful night. Wouldn't you think they'd be more alert in the morning? And therefore the chances of having an accident are less in the morning anyway than having one on the night. Hmm. I don't know. Weird things. I'm doing well, thank you very much, Wolfie. And apart from sort of odd philosophical questions like that, but um, what are you doing? We had a family event yesterday which went uh, successfully, shall we say. And back to streaming today. Well, back to work today and then streaming afterwards. It's uh, Friday, otherwise known locally as Poets Day. And uh, that's an acronym. Uh, and I'm not going to, uh, given that this is a family friendly stream, I'm not going to uh, repeat the uh, the the uh, the full word for the for the first letter, but the but the second is off early tomorrow Saturday. <laughs> Actually, I don't work any. I don't finish any early on a Friday than I do any other day of the week. But yeah, oh, that's good. Your yeah, world domination is going well. Um, how soon is soon? Do I have to leave the planet? Um, uh, you know, in, in a couple of days, or uh, I've got about a week or so before I need to uh, to, to go escape your reign of terror. I was going to do ten more, and I've, I've already lost count of how many I was going to do. So I shall do another two. I don't know whether that was ten or not. On, but I'll so I'll go. Uh, you're right, and I can't actually remember whether I asked on Wednesday or not, but I didn't stream yesterday, so I couldn't ask yesterday. Um, <laughs> but there again, you didn't believe I was going to do it anyway, so <laughs> makes two of us. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, thank you for reminding me. Right, so. Let's get that bit of wire out of there. And we will weave. I don't know why it always feels warm in the studio when I start streaming. It doesn't until I start streaming. As soon as I start streaming, it feels warm here in the studio. I don't know if it's because I'm stood up and uh, yeah, hot air rises <laughs> and I'm generating enough of it as I'm talking, but um, that could be it. And so when I'm sat down, I'm lower down in the room and therefore uh, I am less, out, less in the hot air uh, or whether it's just something about streaming that makes it warm. You did indeed get me there. <laughs> You're hot. So am I. Or oh, are you referring to the fact that uh, so am I. <laughs> I'd love to do something like this in um, well, I'd love to do it in sterling silver, to be honest, but I can't. But uh, it would uh, it would be nice in a really um, something really shiny and really cut. I mean, I could. I've got a I've got a larger version of this as a as a bracelet, uh, done as a bracelet. The um, seashore, I think it was, uh, which was done this way around. And um, sorry, I'm just studying what looks like a. I know, and I'll check it in a second. 
and uh, I'd kind of love to see those colours in, in something uh, with this size of ring, but... Because, I, yeah, I, I, it, it's sort of nice in, in, in the larger rings, but with with uh, with rings this tiny, it becomes more of a solid sort of colour. I'm busy turning this round, but hopefully I haven't forgotten where I am about to uh, weave next. No, I can't see an error. It looked like one, but I can't see it. Um, Can I give you a tip for your game so you're using it? Okay. You made a link. Alright. Can't click any links whilst I'm streaming. Yeah. Yep, yeah, that's where I carry on from. Okay, so what tip did you get for your game? How is it going, by the way? Hmm. It's another ring I've lost. They're probably somewhere... Uh, I, I, it bounced on... I, it came off the ply, it bounced on the desk, but I cannot see it. Uh, Okay, I shall have a look in just a moment. Kind of right. I haven't had time to play it at all. You are you are perfectly correct. Okay, a quest list. Okay, and you're separating out the side quests. Yeah. Interesting. Now, unfortunately, you, yeah, it is. It, it's. Um, I haven't had time to play it um, or, or even download it. It's um, quite quite literally what what happens here is I tend to finish during the week. I I work from nine a.m. in the morning till something like about quarter past half past five, depending just what's going on. And at the end of the month, it's even it's a end of the month, beginning of the month. That sort of boundary is a really busy time anyway, uh, and so that time varies quite a bit. Usually, getting a bit later. What I then do is is um, <laughs> come home from work. Okay, I work from home, so my commute to home is not very far. But the instant I get home, the first thing I have to do is feed all the pussy cats. That doesn't sound much, but that takes about 20 minutes because you'd have cleaned the bowls and feed the pussy cats and just sort of generally say hello to them. Uh, then I then I have to make tea, uh, make make the evening meal. So I start cooking the evening meal. That takes about an hour, so that's about quarter to seven by the time that's finished. Then the next thing of that, of course, is a quick bit of washing up. Uh, well, eat the eat the meal and a quick bigger washing up. So it's seven o'clock. Then it's coming into here on the stream, and if I start late, then the stream starts late. So it's it's still the same sort of time. Stream until sort of nine or ten o'clock at night, or nine nine thirty at night, depending on just how long we go on for. Close the stream down, 
have have a drink, relax for about 10 minutes, uh, shut the computers down, uh, close the studio down, um, and then go to bed, <laughs> and then start again the next day. So it's uh, it, there isn't a right lot of time in there to do anything. And if I want to do something like put a video up onto YouTube, for example, um, you know that takes about let's say five ten minutes to, to start that going. Even if I leave it I, um, and leave the computers running overnight to, to upload it, um, that still takes about ten minutes or so. So the, during the week there isn't a, there isn't a great deal of time. And yes, you um, you called it exactly, um, but. Um, even at weekends at the moment, uh, we are still still a lot of work going on with the fact that we moved into this new premises, new studio and and house, and uh, that's taking up virtually all the weekend until you know a, a working day, for sort of five six o'clock at night, and then we're into feeding the cats, making the meals, and and what have you. Oh no! Yes. No, you don't. Have, I don't have to. <laughs> there is no way you are going to make me play your game. Um, but uh, if I don't have time to do so, but yeah, no, I will. I, I promise I will try and do it. I just won't promise when that will be. Um, I will. I will try and make an, uh, make the effort to do so. Um, I'm not avoiding doing it. It really is just a case of. Um, Managing to get get um, uh, get more than about two or three minutes in which I could actually install and play a game. Uh, yeah, I've still got the. Is the same link as you gave me originally still valid, uh, Wolfie, or does it is it now a new one? Almost made a mistake there. Almost is better than actually making a mistake. Yeah. Well, what I mean, what I could say, um, Wolfie, is you know, if you will develop games that fast, uh, it, it's only what about was it Monday? I think you gave me the link. <laughs> uh, two family events in that time. I've only streamed twice since. <laughs> You know, if you were like other game developers that took sort of six years to do things, then, you know, I, I might have time. Ah, <laughs> uh, dear. I'm not sure whether I'm enjoying doing this tonight. Or not at this point in time.
Yeah, I kind of need. I think I need. I think I kind of need to get this project done <laughs> and move on to something else. Quite what that something else is, I don't know. I feel like learning something new, but I'm not sure what that uh, what that would be. So that would either be sort of something like a completely different craft, or uh, something in a craft that I already do, but something new. Excuse me a second. I just need to clean my glasses. There we go. That's better. I can see. Fear Reaper. And how are you doing? Um, I'm doing quite well, thank you. Um, this has got to be quite the project. This is quite the project. Have you seen this? Have you seen the size of these rings? Three point two millimeters. Don't know. Well, hopefully that's in focus, or just about. Now that was quite some project. That that one there made out the same rings. Um, there's there's over five hundred rings in there, and that took something like about ten or twelve hours to make. And uh, I, I don't actually know how long this one has taken so so far. Um, it, it's uh, it's taking about there's about four inches there. There's 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 going to be almost five hundred rings in this when it's finished as well. And um, this seems to be about half an inch an hour, or an, uh, an inch every two hours, because we've probably done about eight hours here. And this needs to go to um, at least seven inches to get a seven and a half inch bracelet. So uh, we're about halfway there. So, yeah, I do have a lot of patience. Um, actually, I probably don't have a lot of patience. Um, it's something I've said before with a lot of things, especially stuff like that is... You need, well, for me, I'll say you, meaning me, um, you need a lot of patience when it's not going right. When it's going well, it's just stamina more than patience, if you see what I mean. you just got to have the, the will to keep going and keep doing it, because you're repeating the same thing. And, and But it, that in itself can be, be enjoyable. You know, you are doing the same thing every time, but it's kind of like playing a game is the same sort of thing, you're doing the same thing every time, you're just doing it slightly differently. Um, but when it goes wrong is when you need the patience. When you keep dropping these tiny rings or you can't pick one up, that's when you need the patience. That's when it gets to you and you get that to that point of rage quick. <coughs> if, you, if you keep dropping these things, they're bouncing all over the place, they won't go in the right place, or you just can't work out where on earth you're supposed to put the rings next, like I did on the last string at the start of it. I completely lost where I was going. Um, you updated all the houses, removed 20 bugs. Uh, okay. Um, you've got bugs in the houses, have you? What you want to do is, is incorporate them into the game and have people kill them. And yes, I know you didn't mean that type of bug. Uh, updated the storyline, updated the quest list, worked out HP and mana bars, balanced some of your fights, and you are now with busy finishing up the demo story and making a side quest. Ah, you are basically really busy. So in other words, I'm missing everything that's in the game, apart from the bugs. <laughs> I've got 20 cuddly bugs in mine. <laughs> Fear Reaper, um, Incredible Wolfie there, is, is uh, designing and building a game. Uh.
So you, you never know, it might be looking for some more testers. Here's um, Incredible Wolf has supplied me with a copy of the game to play and the only, um, as, as he got it so far that is, the only problem is me finding the time to play it but uh, I, he keeps trying to, he keeps trying to tempt me into uh, being a little bit more aggressive about finding the time. <laughs> by telling me about all these things that I'm missing out on. Patience. I have patience. <laughs> This ring won't go where it's going, but I have patience, it will go. I thought passive aggressive was when you go, yeah, I will kill you when I can be bothered. Um, <laughs> oh dear. Your first language is not English and you're talking about passive aggressive. My first language is English and I've no idea what it means. <laughs> I could, I could, I literally, I kind of, I, I literally couldn't define it, but uh, and I, I'm not altogether sure I could actually know exactly what, what being passive aggressive actually means. Mm. But there again, I guess that's the same um, in in any language, isn't it? The the people who have to learn the language learn the learn these sorts of things, and yet the people who naturally speak the languages don't don't actually learn these things about their own language. One of the things I kind of like about chainmail, even even these little tiny chainmail rings, is it's a pro well, it is a process, obviously, of just sort of you know putting a ring through all the rings and you know rinse and repeat. You keep doing it. Uh, you take a ring, pick it up off the floor where it fa where it falls, uh, and then you take a ring and feed it through uh, some more rings, weave it in, close it up, do the same thing again and you just keep doing that and then all of a sudden you kind of like realise hang on a minute, I've got a piece of weaving here that's four inches long and it just sort of suddenly appears, you know, you don't kind of realise how it got there that's one of the kind of one of the amazing things I find about doing this is how it sort of just just grows suddenly and appears, and you don't you don't don't really notice it, it happening. So I'm looking at the edge there. It, I'm not sure whether that edge is got something wrong with it or not. 
Oh, it's just the way the rings are, are hanging. Uh, I'm kind of looking at, at this one here. Because there seems to be a gap. There isn't, there isn't a ring missing, but I'm kind of looking to see if there's a... Uh, it, I've just not woven it correctly. But I have. It's gone through it, that. The ring is through two other rings, and it's through the correct two rings. So it just happens to be that the way they uh, they're falling. Sometimes uh, rings are a little bit smaller or a little bit larger than the you know the exact size. They're not all a perfect size. Um, and what then happens is you get very slight variations, like you get a tiny gap because the the rings are just a slightly different shape or slightly different size and that's kind of what that one looks like now that's okay Wolfie um, I understand a lot more fun to play a game than listen to me don't worry about it <laughs> HS? What's HS? Which game's that? I, I, I believe you've told me, but I can't actually remember. Uh, and it's not, a, uh, it's not an abbreviation that comes to mind. Sophia Reaper, what have you been up to? It's, it, I don't think you've been in the stream for a long time. And uh, I've got a feeling I'm doing that wrong. So I shall undo that and take another look. Yeah, I am. Here we go. Patience, you see. This is where patience is needed. Things like that, you heard the click probably, where that ring sort of just slipped out of the pliers, and that's when you go, uh, you grit your teeth and. And if it happens enough times, you begin to wish you'd never started. In fact, I'm trying to think, Fear Reaper. Have I actually seen you since you since I started streaming in April again? Because I took a I took a year off. Heart's done. That's it. Yes, of course. Thanks very much, um, Incredible Wolfie. You graduated, immediately found work. Well, that's not bad going. Uh, very busy, and you're now saving money for your own house. Wow, that's not bad going. Hopefully you're doing work that you enjoy. You, uh, What sort of work are you doing? I remember it's a long time ago now since I built my bought built I didn't build I bought my first house and I just started work myself the programmer oh, okay <laughs> what language do you see are uh, you uh, specializing in why does that look like I've done something wrong That looks like I've done something wrong because I've missed a ring out. Java Progress and uh, dot .NET. Progress, I've not heard of that one before. What's... Um, <laughs> as, if it's, as, as if it's as simple as, uh, as, as me saying, what's progress? Uh, <laughs> Apart from moving forward, but um, that's not a not a language I've I've heard. What does it uh, what does it get used for? Uh, you know, what's its a lot of languages are ideal for doing certain things. What uh, what do you use progress for? 
I'll have to have a look that one up. You like your work and the people you work with. That makes it a great thing. If you like doing what you're doing, it always helps. Um, you know, that makes that makes it fun to do work and then days pass and what have you. And the people you work with also definitely helps. So I've played with Java, I haven't played, well, .NET, hmm, I haven't played with .NET really. Um, and I say progress is one I've not uh, not heard of. I do do, well as you know, I do do programming at work. It's not my job as such, but I do a fair bit of it. And uh, unfortunately though, that, that gets um, constrained to either um, Unix script or, or um, v, uh, VBA, unfortunately. It's, it's kind of quite funny. Because at work, they'll let us have... Um, uh, they'll, they'll let us have the uh, Java development libraries. And they'll let us have Eclipse. Um, but they won't let us have permission to run Java apps <laughs> on the PCs. So we can build Java apps. Uh, and you can sort of run them uh, on the dev libraries, but you can't deploy them. So we stuck with Visual Basic for apps, which is quite funny. But there again, yeah, I'm not a developer and we're kind of not really supposed to develop applications. But it's just one of those things that sort of happens in any organisation. And uh, for me, keep, people keep coming to me and sort of saying, can you help me do this task that would take three hours normally in 10 seconds? <laughs> and I usually go, oh, you want me to slow it down? Mm. Oh, it's a 4 gl That probably, exp I, I vaguely had a recollection of, of the name. You know, the name didn't sound... You know, while I said I didn't know it, it didn't sound sort of unfamiliar, but uh, and that's obviously where I've heard it, Progress 4GL. With the 4GL in the end, it, uh, you know, Progress 4GL, it kind of went, ah, yes. Uh, uh, yeah, database interface uh, type language. That's that's it then. Um, it is more familiar now that you, you've tagged it like that. Never done anything with it. Um, I remember, I remember when the um, the four GLs were the next thing. You know, C was a three GL, um, and uh, four GLs. Yeah, you just they, yeah they were the cutting edge. Now it's well, it's complicated as you say. It's old. It's very old. Yeah, it will be. What will it be? Something. God, that must have been, those must have been around in what? 85? Eight, the mid 80s? Um, those? The four GLs? Hmm. I find it kind of, um, I find it kind of amazing, well, as, as me. I'm an old man. Um, I've lived through m through mm, almost the complete computing age so far. Almost. I mean, I wasn't I wasn't around for the very first computers. I'm not that old. Um, so I, you know, I, I wasn't around for colossus and um, and things like that, and 
whatever it was that uh, Ada um, made. But um, you know, for most of the in quotes modern uh, uh, computer generation, I've been you know computer um, history. I've been around, and it's still um, is it oh, okay. Quickest database on the market. We don't get. Um, I don't get any choice. I if I work in if I need to work with databases, it's either um, Oracle or Access. And Access is terrible uh, for most of what I want to do. But uh, it's we have site-wide licensing on Oracle, so it always has to be Oracle. <laughs> That's a little bit of an awkward thing to uh, to deal with, is that Wolfie? Because you, you then don't know whether you can. I suppose it's not so bad on PayPal, is it? Because if somebody takes the payment that they're supposed to have taken, then it just you know wants more money off you from PayPal. But it's kind of awkward when uh, when something like that happens and you don't know whether to spend the money or not. You miss SQL. It's much more convenient. It's like everything else, isn't it, Fear Reaper? Though it's what you know best, really. I mean, um, SQL these days is so pervasive, used in everything that uh, you know you can you can go to a, a MySQL database, you can go to an Oracle database, you can go to um, a Microsoft database, you can go to a Kix database, and um, It'll run. It'll run SQL, uh, and that yeah. From that point of view, and as I've found out, there are slight variations uh, because, of course, they don't. Whilst most of them will run ANSI SQL or SQL, um, they they have their own quirks. Uh, Oracle's version of the um, after join is one that puzzled me for a long time before I got the hang of, um, of of that particular variation in Oracle. And I'm trying to think now, I, I used to use, at one time, I, I, don't, I, I literally do not remember anything about it now, but I used to be quite uh, uh, fluent, shall we say, in a VAX in the VAX uh, VMS database, or the, the database that was sort of most common in VAX VMS uh, from digital, and I cannot remember for the life of me what it was, and that, that had its own um, structure and syntax, and the first time I came across SQL, I, you know, I couldn't follow it, and uh, these days I look at it and go, what's so difficult about, about SQL? <laughs> Yeah. Except when you're going into things like cross join, not cross joins, cross tabs, and stuff like that, then I kind of go, uh, Google, <laughs> please help. <laughs> was um, was progress one of the one of the um, languages that you used to take free form data? As opposed to uh, structured data, because around that sort of time, I seem to recall, it was quite a um, an industry buzz, shall we say, about um, uh, storing unstructured data in databases, uh, and therefore having to have sort of a whole new language construct to deal with uh, unstructured data. I kind of can't really imagine. Other, I mean, other, other than sort of uh, the database, you know, database code that you'd write in a um, a programming language of some kind, a separate programming language like C or uh, 
C-sharp, something like that. I kind of can't envisage how you talk to a database without SQL. <laughs> um, it, it's, it's that, you know, I guess it's that pervasive, so I've used it that for that long. Yeah. yeah, I suppose that's one way out of it, Wolf, isn't it? I mean, worst case is they just ask you for it again, I suppose, but... I mean, are you sure you haven't paid it in twice? <laughs> that's always a thinking you've paid it and then put some put money in again and um, actually haven't. Or did, if you know what I mean. I don't think I've ever done that with PayPal. I have paid um, back when when it was more easy to do. I have paid a bill twice before now um, uh, on the on the internet. That's before, of course, um, companies started getting a little bit more interactive about um, you paying bills online and not letting you do things like that. I keep meaning to do myself a, a little uh, web database application here. Um, I was going to say in the studio, but sort of uh, around here, because I, I have a heck of a lot of materials for things like um, chainmail, or the pyrography, you know, pyrography by wood, um, and uh, for little bits of the carving and things, I buy wood. So when I... Uh, I keep a stock of things, and for stuff like chain mail, which which gets sold as jewellery, then keep you know knowing how much things cost and how much a project costs and how much time has been spent, etc., becomes important to sort of gain pricing right and things. And I keep meaning to uh, uh, to put because at the moment I keep what records I in terms of quantities and things I've got are kept. Uh, uh, kept in the Excel data, uh, Excel database. <laughs> I wish uh, an Excel uh, spreadsheet, and it's not very good, but it kind of just is good enough to write the records in. Well, with it, with one of these uh, to it jobs, that is, uh, you know, I will do it properly when I get around to it. And uh, that's that's kind of a job I keep meaning to do here is to put together a web database. And front end, where I can sort of keep track of projects, what uh, what they cost, uh, what replacement costs are, what stock I've got, and things like that. But um, what you do, you use .NET and Java. Okay. Yeah. Um, hmm. I know what you mean, an interface bridge. So, is it into... Uh, that's interesting actually, I suppose. Because is it... Is the bridge actually writing... Converting the Java call into a progress language? So... I suppose what I'm meaning there is um, having a Java program that actually constructs a, a SQL, the equivalent of, you know, it, 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 it creates a SQL uh, command string uh, and then sends that to the database to be executed as a SQL command string or um, is it sort of an API type bridge where it's calling the back end? Of course, I'm just Fascinated, just interested. I mean, it's. Um, I'm asking you about your work. You finish work for the day, and you probably are not interested in in actually talking about it uh, until you go back the next day, which of course, hopefully, is in um, another two days. Okay. <laughs> 
I shall give up trying to understand it at that point. I, I will, um, if I want to know any more, I shall look it up on the internet. The, um, I was going to say after this stream, uh, probably after this stream, well, it would be after this stream, because I'm not going to do it while I'm streaming, but that after this stream may be sometime in, within the next month. Um, but, uh, Two on here, yeah. So have you actually started looking for houses, um, Fear Reaper, or, uh, or, or is it literally just, I am, I am saving money and when I think I've got enough I'm going to start looking, or have you sort of been... Uh, Sort of visiting houses and going, I'd quite like to buy this one, or this is what I need to look for, or anything like that, or I say, is it just an abstract? I've got to save, you know, thousands, and then uh, then I'll be able to uh, to afford to go looking. Thank you. Given that. Uh, 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 given, um, given the uh, requirements, or so, so, given the, the salaries of some um, programmers, especially with sort of uh, that are familiar with the uh, less than recent languages, uh, in some cases, you could be earning enough each week to uh, to, to buy a house. So. <laughs> uh, there are some programmers out there that get. Ridiculous sounding wages. Uh, and by ridiculous, I don't mean sort of um, one or two dollars. I mean lots and lots and lots of um, whatever currency you can think of. And I know over the years I've got, you know, when I long time ago when I was doing programming sort of professionally uh, I was I was kind of um, the programming I was doing was officially sanctioned shall we say although that wasn't officially my job um, and I used to know all these uh, you know do work on all these various uh, systems like OS 9 and, um, and programming on on, on Databases like Ingress and one or two others. And over the years afterwards, I've sort of seen jobs for programmers and uh, you know, at, at what even then were sort of ridiculous wages. Let's say the average wage at that particular time was in the UK would have been, I don't know, let's say, 50, I'll make this up, £15,000. Uh, and... Um, you know that they were going for sort of thirty and forty thousand pound jobs. Uh, you know, if if you knew these things, and, I'm, and I, I remember at the time thinking, God, I wish I'd still, I was still being, I wish I could still remember some of that stuff because I could make a fortune now. <laughs> uh, but you don't. Mm. So you're just saving up, and uh, you, oh, you, 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 yeah, you. you Looking around a bit, but not serious. Okay. Well, I mean that's the nice uh, that's the nice thing. You got, you have some time well, some time to do that. I think when once once you've saved up enough money to be able to do it, it kind of becomes a little bit more urgent. You know, you kind of feel like you, you ought to be moving. And I know I did at the time when I could afford to do it. It was kind of like I really sort of. Um, it changed a little bit from sort of you know, just casually looking at, at the adverts and things to one of seriously looking at, at adverts and reading them and comparing them and it just it just changed a little bit at that point because it became more of a I can do it and you kind of I, I would say I felt I had to do it I, you know I didn't have to find a house and things but it sort of almost became sort of a Secondary job was finding one. Um, 
you get a year's contract. Yeah, they do like to see a long-term uh, ability to pay back money when you've borrowed it. So one of the funny things about banks, you know, they kind of want their money back. Yeah. Well, I know the first house that I bought, it was, it was eight months before I could actually afford to live in it. I bought it. And I couldn't afford to live in it for eight months. No, I ju they just uh, because I'd actually spent everything uh, to buy it, and um, I couldn't, uh, you know, I, I couldn't afford to buy anything else. So I bought the house. I couldn't afford to furnish it. Uh, even, you know, even if you take into consideration the stuff I already had, like a bed and what have you, couldn't actually afford to furnish it. For, for about six months and even so after about six months I sort of managed to be able to afford to put carpets down and, and lights in and things like that <laughs> uh, and then uh, it was about another two or three months before I could actually afford to live in it and that was you know because things like the gas bill gas and electric bills that I would have had to pay more than they sort of next to nothing when the house is empty and uh, you know, because that's on top of where I was currently living at the time. But you know, you got there. <laughs> you researched a lot. Uh, yeah, the, well, you're talking about banks. I think you've got it exactly right. They are alien, Wolfie. Um, yeah. <laughs> You're right, Fear Reaper. I, I learnt to drive when I was... I was kind of lucky in a way, I guess. I learnt to drive probably when I was a, about 13. Uh, and I learnt to drive tractors. So by the time I could drive... A, well, by the time I could legally drive on the roads... Uh, and I didn't drive on the roads until I could legally drive on the roads. Um, I already knew how to to drive a vehicle. That's not the same as driving on roads. I could, you know, steer, change gears, and all these sorts of things. Um, but uh, uh, which kind of changed the perspective a little bit because I wasn't. Um, Uh, what was it? What am I trying to say there? Sort of things like um, my parents, for example, were less bothered about me borrowing the car uh, and stuff like that because I, you know, because I, I took my test fairly quickly uh, and passed. But I'd sort of, if you like, uh, by then been effectively driving for a, for a few years. So uh, I, I didn't have as much of a need and. Uh, uh, to uh, to 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 get a car that quickly. You bought your phone. You're still thirty six. Yeah. You can. Yeah. You know, uh, but that was. Yeah. Unfortunately, I never got that because I went into work when I finished. Actually, I suppose. I suppose at, at, at school up to seventeen. Uh, it was free travel, so yeah, and then but then I started work directly from there. So I actually, um, whilst I did go to a university, I did that after I started working. So it's part of part of work. So I, I, my university uh, was done whilst I was working. But I don't think I I don't think I bought bought a car. It's, it's only about oh, it must only be about. I was going to say I'm trying to think now. It must be about ten years ago, or something like that. They actually bought my first brand new car. But there again, um, there again, I've missed a ring off of there. Um, my first brand new car I got 
uh, when I, I, I've been a salesman in my life, selling things. And uh, as part of that job, I was, you know, part of the job was, uh, was being, I was about to say given a new car, but in the UK, I don't know about anywhere else. Um, but they give you the new car, you pay tax on it. <laughs> so it's not exactly free. And uh, after, after a couple of years or more of that, it actually became more cost effective. Instead of them buying me a car and me paying tax, it actually became more cost effective for me to buy the car. And then I didn't pay, well, I paid tax on the money that I earned, but I didn't have to pay tax on, on them giving me a car. And it actually worked out better. And that was the first time I bought a new car. And then ever since then, I've been, I sort of have, until just recently, actually bought new cars fairly regularly. Because kind of like once you've got one, it becomes, I won't say cheaper, because it's not, but it becomes easier to keep replacing it with new cars. And yes, I had a nice car. So the first brand new car I bought was a Jaguar. And I kind of want to get a new one at the moment. Uh, I'm not going to be be doing so for a little while. The move, yeah, house move and studio move meant uh, I spent all my money, so I can't afford a new one at the moment. But I am uh, starting to save up. So if anybody wants to contribute to me and you get, you can always subscribe, subscribe to the stream. <laughs> and. If there was ever any money left over from buying materials, then I might go, might go towards buying a new car. Um, uh, no, I doubt that will ever happen. Um, but uh, I think what, what I'm what I'm looking to get now is a new car. Actually, is an electric car. Oh wow! What's he around for? Because because I bought a Jaguar. The um, At the time when I bought the new Jaguar, it actually wasn't as expensive as it might sound. They were actually quite a reasonably priced car. And um, I was traveling something like 40,000 miles a year. And uh, sort of the relative comfort of a car like that was um, very useful when you're doing a lot of miles and sitting, you know, sitting on motorways and things and driving late into the night as I often was you know to like nine o'clock at night to get from place to place and uh, but uh, when you when it's sort of business like which is what the car was then you know it was part of my job if you like part of my business uh, you don't think of the cost of the car it's not actually the cost of the car that matters I mean, it matters from the point of view you've got to lay out that sort of cash by whatever means, whether it's a, a loan or saving up or whatever it is. But it's 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 not really that much of an issue. The, the issue becomes more one of running costs. How much does it cost you to run it? Um, so it, it's, you know, you, you replace the car after two or three years. How much money do you get back? At the end of two years, on top of the service costs, on top of you know the uh, the petrol, on top of new tyres or whatever it is, you 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 take that running cost and then work that out over the two three years, however long you decide to keep the vehicle, and that's the cost of owning it. And so it's kind of like um, uh, there's an upfront cost, like an investment, I suppose, if you want to put it that way and uh, you just perpetuate that investment forward into the next car and so once you've got one it, it, the replacement then just becomes how much does it cost each month to run and when you look at it that way 
it kind of becomes a lot it's, it becomes a lot cheaper to look at it that way daft as it sounds because you're not saying you know i've bought a car for 20 26 thousand whatever pounds euros whatever they are uh, and therefore in three years i need to pay 26 thousand units off you're kind of uh, looking at it it's going to cost me um you know a thousand euros uh, a year to run and there's at the end of the th you know three years i'm going to get twenty one thousand back so you know over three years i have to find five thousand pounds plus the thousand pounds per year running costs not the whole twenty six thousand so it's kind of it's, it's a different sort of mass and it actually makes buying some of the nicer cars a little bit easier you still have to find that initial 26,000 uh, by some means but um, these days that's when you get things like lease purchase which is what that effectively is it, it, it's um, I mean I did it for myself but these days it's uh, it's a lease purchase uh, thing where uh, uh, schemes where uh, you you effectively are only paying for the time that you keep the car. I was just thinking, the thought just crossed my mind then is, here I am, doing chain mail, talking about purchase schemes on cars. <laughs> Don't you get some real weird things on this stream uh, in the uh, in discussion? <laughs> Yeah, so these days I'm, I'm no longer in sales, I work from home, so the amount of mileage I actually drive is fairly low and we do have uh, two cars, one I still need for my business, you know, for, for the job that I do, uh, and Lady Zara has a car, and uh, I've put one ring on there again, meaning I should have put two, and uh, so, you yeah, know, electric car is what I'm looking for next. So we've got one, one electric car and one non-electric car. Because a lot of the time we're just doing a lot of short journeys, you know, to the to the local shops and things like that. Yeah, you know, within a hundred miles in any particular journey. And uh, electric vehicles are so much cheaper to operate. But we then still have a, uh, a car that uh, doesn't need charging if we have to do sort of a thousand miles in one day for some reason. Working from now is nice, yes. Well, it, it has its ups and downs type of thing. Uh, it, it doesn't suit everybody. You've got to be... Um, the sort of person that can actually work in isolation, if you like, from other people, because uh, it, yeah, you, know, you, you, there are some people that in that environment would not do any work; they'd be distracted by television and things like that, and. Uh, You know they can't uh, they can't actually work in that environment, and there are there are people that sort of like uh, you know uh, who need to sort of always ask colleagues and things about how to do something or they're always in that sort of conversation, and again, you know they they kind of find it difficult to work remotely, and you've got a you've got a slightly different skill set as well in that um, because you're not in an office with your, your co-workers um, you've got to actively uh, foster those relationships shall we say uh, you know it's sort of you you don't meet somebody walking in the door or going for you know to the coffee machine or out for lunch that sort of thing so you sort of actively have to sort of 
almost just ring people up for no apparent reason just to sort of say hello how are you that sort of thing um, and that sort of takes it's a different skill set to working in the office to working remotely and uh, it works for some people it doesn't work for others you've got a 2013 Kia Sportage that sounds like quite a nice car full option <laughs> Yeah, kind of my the, my current car is um, somewhat of in, it was literally an indulgence at the time. Mm -hmm. you, uh, because we've now kept this one a lot longer, it's not it's not been replaced as a, as I would normally have replaced them. Um, but it's uh, it's 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 a bit of a silly car actually from that point of view, and it's still a Jaguar, but it's a big one, and um, it's nice. It's expensive on petrol, its mileage is terrible, uh, and its tax, um, its car tax in the UK, is not very, uh, yeah, it's not very cheap, that sort of thing, but, so it was an indulgence, it was kind of like, I knew when I bought it, I wasn't going to replace it with the same level of car, and, you know, it was a, I'm going to do this once, and once only, and then I'm going to go back to a more sensible car, but, uh, I, I kind of, I kind of like SUVs apart from the fact that I like SUVs because of the room that's in them, and if you use, if you make use of that room, I kind of don't like them for everyday use on on um, the roads. I mean, for example, um, in a lot of towns here in the UK, there's a lot of things like Range Rovers or um, that sort of very high up SUV type vehicle which are kind of completely pointless on a road you know they're, they're, um, they're big, they're bulky, they get in the way, you can't see through them um, yes they've got four wheel drive but so does my car and, and mine's a lot smaller um, but yeah lots of uh, and yeah, I am tell you what, I am really surprised talking you know, about size. Um, the Desara's got a, what would be a relatively small car. I won't say, I don't know what the exact size of the Sportage is, I've seen them around, but um, it's a, a sort of a, an average sort of small hatchback, if you, if you know what I mean. Mine's a saloon car. So, the Jaguar Saloon, it's a big. It's a long car, it's a wide car, but and it's got a fairly sizable boot, but you can't really get much in it. Lady Zara's hatchback, uh, you get a phenomenal amount of stuff in it. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, as an example, I, I, not so long ago I packed 10 boxes in there. Now, the boxes were... Uh, must what two foot by two foot by 18 inches I think they were off the top of my head and uh, so there were you know I, I packed 10 of them in uh, which was which was absolutely amazing I mean 10 of them was kind of like half a house <laughs> and uh, it went into this hatchback I was um, it still amazes me just how much we get in that car if, if we sort of you know, do a lot of gardening or whatever and we've got sort of uh, bags full of um, garden rubbish to go away put them in the car we'll get something like about 15 sacks of rubbish in the car and if you can imagine sort of the normal big refuse sack you get about 15 of those stuffed full of leaves and grass and bits of tree and things um, and they go into this into this car and it's kind of like it's almost a case of, uh, does this car get a touch of TARDIS about it? Uh, no, I meant to just mention uh, the, that um, lease, you know, lease car from your job. You can get private leases, by the way. It doesn't have to be from a business or for a business. Well, certainly in the UK anyway. I don't think it's particularly any different anywhere else. Um, there are private, lease, private, private leasing companies. 
Uh, in fact, a lot of uh, a lot of well, in the UK, a lot of the manufacturers started providing their own leasing facilities as well. Um, <laughs> yeah, the, the, that is. Once you've got used to the space, I I kind of agree. I used to have um, an estate car. You don't see them too much about these days, um, but an estate car kind of extended hatchback if you kind of want to think of it that way or a saloon car with a hatchback on the back of it rather than a, a, um, the I'll say boot in the UK um, trunk I suppose they get called in other countries and uh, it's kind of uh, you do kind of miss the space in my case we have to throw a lot of wood in there or something and I, I can sort of get some little you know long thin pieces in my car Anything more than sort of um, two by two lengths of um, of wood, I have to take Lady Zara's car to get them in. the The one thing I like though about um, the sedans is they're quieter than a hatchback or an SUV or or an estate car. Um, so, particularly me when when I was doing that forty thousand miles a year, uh, I'm driving a lot on the motorway. The quieter the car can get. The more relaxing it is that the, I, I did for about six months, uh, six to nine months drive a, a hatchback, not a hatchback, an estate car, um, doing that job. Uh, and the noise gets to you after a while. So they have the places. Oh, okay. Private lease is expensive then. Hmm. I don't know. It's uh, I know the you know over the years they have changed in the in the UK and uh, private you know um, it, in the UK you used to either buy a car outright go to a bank and get a loan or hire purchase and uh, now. Uh, private leasing is sort of being added to that list as uh, you know as a fairly common thing here in the UK. Um, not a lot of people. I say not. I will say it's still not as popular as, as some of the other things, and I think that's partly just because people don't really understand it yet much. I mean, it's been around a few years, quite a few years. Um, but the uh, you know with uh, with private leasing you never own the vehicle. I mean sometimes you get the option at the end of it to pay a f a sum and uh, keep the vehicle, but uh, essentially with private leasing you never own it, and a lot of people don't actually like that. All of the others, whether it's higher purchase or a bank loan, you kind of do at the end. But uh, yeah, well, it, 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 it's. I mean, part of part of the reason why they tend to be sort of acquired is you haven't got that big volume of space behind the back seats, uh, which sort of resonates and uh, you know picks up noise and uh, echoes it around a little bit, and um, your. Generally speaking, with a sedan, the rear wheels are half enclosed in the back end of the car, whereas in a hatchback or um, an estate or an SUV, I guess they're part of the car, the interior of the car. You know, you're, the interior of the car is going back over the back of those wheels. So, again, any noise that's generated from those is sort of coming up into the vehicle. It was just something that I noticed. I mean, it's. It, it, it's not the sort of thing where you go, you know, you get in it and oh, it's immediately noisy, if you know what I mean. It's just, um, um, over, over a period of time, I suppose you, you never you never really hear it, um, but it's sort of when you get into a, a sedan car, um, and it, it, it's just a, it's just a, a lot quieter <laughs> and you, you notice the difference shall we say and uh, 
I, I, no, you know, I noticed it. I noticed being a little bit more relaxed at the end of journeys. You know, once once I did that transition. The other, I mean, the other thing though, of course, for uh, for sedans is they generally, you know, the suspension is set up differently. Um, they tend to be set up more for a smoother ride than a sports vehicle. I mean, a sports vehicle is meant, you know, tends to have a harder suspension. Um, so that you feel the feedback from the road and that in itself means it tends to be more noisy because you know, uh, the noise is transmitted to the, the car chassis as opposed to on a, a sedan which might have a softer suspension and therefore um, you know, dulls out a lot of those noises and sort of sedans you, you're tending towards the more luxury cars and they tend to sort of want to put more noise suppression in them and these sorts of things so it's not exactly making a, a, a an apples for apples com comparison but it's still uh... yeah, okay fun in your eyes That's probably not actually that uh, that bad. Yeah, that's yeah, it, it's a yeah, fair for the setup different. Four hundred and seventy euros. Um, it's I'm I'm just trying to think. I mean, I I when I started uh, at least with the Jaguar, that would have been in easily in that sort of order. And uh, that's a few years ago, quite a few years ago. Um, uh, yeah, but that's where you've got to change the mindset a little bit, Fury. But it is, um, yeah, you got 470 euros a month, uh, you know, for. Let's say three years, so you work out what the cost of that is, what is it going to be. Um, so that's what my brain is not working this afternoon. Um, is that 5,000 euros a year? Give or take a bit. So 15,000 euros for a brand new car, and then uh, at the end of it, you, you, you've you paid 15 thousand euros and, and you walk away from that you've probably not paid any servicing costs any uh, you know lots of other costs that you, you know, tend to be included as part of the contracts and um, that's there I don't know if that includes insurance or, or that's on top but when you think about you 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 if you wanted to buy that cash Kai um, yourself you go to a bank and I don't know what they are brand new um, what would be about 24 25,000 euros? Okay, thanks for that. But you know, you, uh, 15, no, 60, 17,000. Okay, you know, you might have paid 25, you might be 25,000 euros for, for that vehicle, and I'm, I'm making that up because I don't actually know, but kind of a guess. Um, you're then going to pay the bank on top of that an interest fee. So you've, you've loaned twenty five thousand euros. So you know that that might be what five percent of that. Um, so that's what seven and a uh, two and a half. That's going to be what about four thousand, four five thousand euros in in interest fee. Um, then on top of that, you've got you know maybe five hundred, six hundred euros each once or twice a year for uh, for a maintenance uh, on the vehicle so when you when you you've put you know that together with the um, uh, with the maintenance fees you you're starting to get you know up to I don't know let's say 10,000 uh, euros then at the you know after three years you decide you want to sell the vehicle whether you've got to you know you've got to find somebody that's going to pay you 
uh, an appreciable amount of money for it and uh, if you part exchange it you're never going to get the same sort of money so w when you sort of look at your 470,000 say your 40, you know, 470 a month and you do that sort of maths on it uh, and potentially tax and all sorts comes into it then um, you might find that there's actually not a lot of difference between the two but it relies on the fact that if you buy it yourself you sell it after that period of time that's where you um, that's the time that the, the comparison is valid if you intend to buy that vehicle and keep it for 10 years or whatever uh, you know, a longer period of time then leasing is silly you know it is it is always going to be better to sort of pay it out right if you can but um, if you sort of do intend to regularly make that change every every so often you'll find that there's not a lot of difference about it and, and once you've sold it after two years you don't own it either <laughs> so um, you know it's kind of um, Kind of works sort of both ways, and, and uh, whilst you, you've uh, you've got a lease for the vehicle, for example, your liability is the lease for three years, which is you know, seventeen thousand euros, not the twenty six thousand that you've got out the bank. So you've actually sort of borrowed, if you like, ten thousand euros less. So <clears throat> swings and roundabouts. It's an interesting. Uh, so I spent probably about six months for me and it'll be different sums for everybody and, and different circumstances but for me I spent something like about six months looking at it and looking at the um, at the finances and things like if I buy a if I lease a vehicle then I don't have to come up with this initial 26,000 euros um, I still have to come up with 16 but I don't have to come up with 16 on day one I have to have come up with 16,000 by the end of three years. <laughs> On day one, I have to find the four and a half, you know, 470 or whatever it is. And it's not as simple as that, and I agree, but it's, um, it's one of those things that gets really interesting like that um, because the, you know, your, your timeline, as, as I describe it, changes. Um, buying a vehicle requires you to find all the cost up front. Or most of it, whereas leasing a vehicle spreads it out more. But uh, let's say it's different for different people. And I've stopped completely doing this, but it's um, it's getting up to nine o'clock, and I'm going to stop anyway at this point. But let's see how long this is. Five inches. It was at four inches early, so we've done an inch. <laughs> uh, I have another two inches to do uh, before uh, we can. Well. An inch and a half, and then we'll put two points on each end, which will add up the extra half inch. And then we can put a clasp on it. So maybe on the next stream, so maybe maybe tomorrow night, we might get a chance to actually complete this. But it's uh, I still love playing with chainmail. <laughs> that it's so uh, it's like cloth. It's so uh, it's so fluid. Is this one? I mean, this one's quite fluid as well this one gets a bit more stiff but it's I still love playing with these things you know, running, running, running some three fingers <laughs> but that's kind of what it would look like actually even for a fella that it normally I'd have said so this small rings is kind of a bit um, would potentially be more suitable for a female rather than rather than a fella but it doesn't look too bad, actually, I suppose. I mean, it might look better if it was stainless steel, like, you know, that sort of colour, but... It's a bit too, it's a bit too sort of shiny for a fellow, perhaps, but... <laughs> oh, Moobot, that is nice timing. Uh, I'm talking about the shops just when I'm talking about uh, the jewellery. Ah, uh, dear. Well, I am going to say um, thank you to everybody. Um, to anybody that's in chat, Fear Reaper um, and the Incredible Wolfie, if you're still around and, and uh, busy playing a game. Thank you very much for talking in chat. It's, it's fantastic to have you around and uh, Fear Reaper to see you again. 
and uh, I wish you luck in finding a house and hopefully I'll see you on, on, on another stream in the future and uh, uh, so, yeah, thank you to everybody else I intend to stream tomorrow night I do intend to stream tomorrow night if uh, you want to be sure keep an eye out uh, anybody that's watching this is keep an eye out on Twitter uh, at Zara Ganat. I do very much try and tweet before I go live or if there's any reason why I can't stream I will tend to put it out on Twitter to let people know I'm not going to stream tomorrow night's stream will be between it'll be the last time I get to say this you know at least this year uh, between 1900 hours and 2000 hours uh, British summertime because tomorrow night is when it changes uh, so and that's uh, 1800 hours to 1900 hours um, GMT or UTC somewhere in that time window it varies just depending on, on how my day has gone I try and get as close to, to the start time of, of 1900 hours British summer time as, uh, as I can and before I go I'm going to point out a couple of uh, things the blue boxes at the bottom which uh, contain URLs for just about all the social thing sites to do with Zaragan Art so the website, the Facebook, Twitter uh, YouTube, where the old uh, archive of Twitch broadcast is being uploaded, and I will uh, manage at some point to start generating new videos to go on YouTube as well. Uh, but unfortunately, at the moment, I want to get the archive uploaded, then I can create some space on my disk. It's taking up three quarters of a terabyte of space. I could do with using for something else. And I'll also point out the, the shop that says emeganart.exe.com, where there are things like because I haven't got these on yet but things like this is uh, available for sale uh, on that site fantastic Christmas presents if you want to get a Christmas present early and uh, I think they look good but uh, obviously you can form your own opinion and I will also remind anybody of the two buttons at the top of the right of the screen there's the follow button so you can get notified and see me on your favourites list and on the, the front follow page uh, if you uh, are on Twitch at the time when I go live and the subscription button is there as well if you would like to help out the stream with uh, the proceeds of uh, subscriptions which go towards buying any sort of materials or tools that we use on the stream so with the adverts done I'm going to leave you to Twitch and its adverts so thank you for watching hope to see you on the next stream Bye for now.
is hard enough. My heart is alive, beating a soul. Can you still feel?